Okay, I said I'd do a video on estrogen management. Um, now this is probably a bit of a touchy subject and there's a million different opinions on this and by no means is what I'm saying 100% fact. It's what I know to the best of my knowledge and my experience. Now you have three basic, well I suppose even four. You have CIRM, selective estrogen receptor modulators like Novodex and Tamoxifen. You have suicide inhibitors, mainly aromacin. You have binding agents like uh, Proviron. And then you have AIs, aromatized inhibitors, in the sense of stuff like Remedex and um, Letrozole. Now let's just start with how estrogen is formed within the body. Estrogen is not manufactured as a hormone. We produce an enzyme called aromatase. This then attaches to testosterone and converts it to estrogen. So, you have several options. You can use a anti-aromatized inhibitor. Now let's take letrozole for example. Now letrozole is about 90-95% efficient. I see no reason why anyone would run letrozole outside of contest prep. And I'll explain why. Estrogen is responsible for quite a lot of positive things within the body. It increases androgen receptor upregulation. It's essential for growth. It's essential for libido. And it helps regulate cholesterol levels and support good cholesterol production and reduce bad cholesterol production. So you want estrogen there. If you're destroying your body's ability to produce 95% of its estrogen, the chances are you're going to create problems in all of these areas. So you're not going to get AR upregulation, you're going to restrict your growth and possibly even have libido issues and potentially increase the risk of uh, bad cholesterol and plaque. So you can go for Aromadex, which is probably more common. Uh, this is weaker, definitely. I think it's about 60-65% efficient. But again, you're stopping at source. Now, the other problem with running AIs is that when you restrict the production of an enzyme within the body, when you remove that restriction, that, your body will go into overdrive and overproduce. And as a result, you can get a massive estrogen rebound, which can quite often result in massive water load, which is what you quite often see post-competition where guys blow up with 20, 30 pounds of water because they haven't managed their estrogen come down very well. So the next things we've got is aromacin. Now, aromacin is a bit of an unusual one. It's a suicide inhibitor. It doesn't stop the production of aromatase, but it will bind with it permanently, uh, which means it can no longer bind with, with test. And that brings us nicely onto Proviron. Now, Proviron is an oral androgenic. It's very mild in action, but what it does do is it binds to SHBG, which is sexual human binding globule. Sorry, hormone binding, sexual hormone binding globule. I always get that wrong. Uh, which is one of the items that will bind with testosterone to convert it. So, if you bind with that, it can't do its job, therefore you will increase the level of free floating test. And aromacin will do a similar job as well. Um, and then the last one is your CIRMs, your selective estrogen receptor modulators. These are drugs like Novodex and Tamoxifen. Now what these do is they bind the receptors. So the estrogen is still present in your body, but it can't do the job on the areas of concern. Now, personally, I like to run um, a blend of CIRMs and suicide inhibitors and Proviron. I don't ever use AIs. So my personal choice would be 12.9 mg of aromacin a day uh, with probably in the region of 50 mg of Proviron a day, split into two doses, uh, 25 a.m., 25 p.m. And then 20 to 40 milligram of Novodex PM. I run Novodex PM because it can make you drowsy. So obviously it's, another, it's down to the individual uh, and all for this will depend on how sensitive you are to estrogen issues as well. I carry water quite badly but I don't get a lot of the other problems associated with it. Uh, now if you are running a cycle and you're not running estrogen management or you are and it's not being effective you've got the potential that the estrogen management is no good i.e. it's fake or just that you need something stronger and sometimes you may have no choice and have to go to Remedex or even go to Letro. Now let's get another thing clear as well. 
when your nipples start getting sore and puffy, that doesn't immediately mean you've got gyno. It means you've got the start of gyno. The nipple will swell first before it actually starts the increase in tissue. So if you catch it relatively early, you can get rid of any problems. Once you've got gyno, once you actually have formed breast tissue, you can't get rid of it through letrozole or imidex or anything else. It's surgery. That's your only choice. So just be aware and listen to your bodies because if you leave it too long, then you're going to have a surgery requirement option. If, however, you catch it early enough, in most cases you can reverse the process and things will settle back down. Uh, obviously, there are certain drugs that are slightly anti-estrogenic as well. Um, stuff like um, Masteron. And um, the thing is with these sort of drugs, if you're, if you're in mass, you see it won't affect your natural test levels. What it will do is show test levels to be slightly elevated because estrogen levels will be reduced and as a result, not as much test will be getting converted to estrogen, so the test will be higher. And another thing, uh, stuff like progesterone and prolactin, if your estrogen management is on point, progesterone cannot get a foothold, it cannot be produced, okay? Your estrogen management has to be out of control before progesterone can be produced. So as long as you manage it, you should never have an issue with progesterone. Uh, or prolactin for that matter. Now that's the medical standpoint on it though i am a believer in that the body can do some weird and wonderful things when pushed too far into a corner uh, and i have seen progesterone issues produced when estrogen management has been on point so i'm not convinced that there isn't rare occasions that the body can adapt but in general if you manage your estrogen you should have no problems with the other female hormones and that's it really, not much more to that one I don't think. Um, you know, you need to pick your drugs, you need to know what drugs are aromatizing, and therefore you can work out what you need to control that. But I always believe that a little bit of lots of different control mechanisms is better than slamming just one area. It helps keep things in a little bit more balance. Your body's always going to fight against you, it's always going to want estrogen to level out with testosterone, it's just because your body wants to stay in balance. Uh, and if you push it too hard the wrong way, it will buy back, particularly afterwards. So, basically, do not over control your estrogen because you'll restrict your growth. I mean, it's, I think well, a lot of you see these got all these young lads running two and two and a half G cycles, but they're not really getting any responses off it. And it's like, well, not all the gear must be shit, so there must be another reason. And then you find out they're running letters off because they don't want any water weight and they want to keep their arms and they want to keep tight and dry. Well, it's, and the reason they're not growing is because there's no issue in the body to support growth. So it is important and it doesn't want to be overly controlled. It may take a little bit of experimentation, playing around with different levels until you find your, your fine point. But once you do, then off you go. Okay, I hope that was useful. Um, I don't think there's really anything there that's dramatic or particularly uh, amazing, but if it helps guys, then great. Okay, take care and I'll speak to you soon.